Thanks for tuning in to the Mariners' virtual baseball bash. Now, enjoy this edition of Inside Corner with Aaron Goldsmith and Marco Gonzalez. You open Zoom, I'm like, dude, you are boring. Someone woke up with a side of sass this morning. God, you know, when I look at myself, I didn't even realize how good it looks until I stare at Waviness. Look at this wavy. It's very robust. <laughs> I knew I should have had somebody else do this with me. No, that's not fair to say at all. Okay, oh, cool. my Marco yeah, Gonzalez. Yeah, yeah. I felt like I was making a stupid face. Try it again. Wow. Hey, you're the you're the athlete here. Inside corner with Gonzo and Goldie. Ah, uh, yes, we are back with a very special live episode of the Inside Corner. I'm Mariners broadcaster Aaron Goldsmith. We hope you're enjoying our two-week celebration of Mariners baseball with the Mariners virtual baseball bash. And in my opinion, the following hour will be one of the best hours we have during these two weeks that have been phenomenal. As I welcome in the two guys I'll be hanging out with for the next 60 minutes, as always, Marco Gonzalez, joined this week by Mariners pitcher Kendall Graveman. First of all, Marco, man, back at it live this time, so there's no editing involved. Be sure to keep that in mind. Yeah, no, I'm I'm uh, I'm nervous, but I'm anxious because, like you said, I think this is going to be one of the most fun hours that we've had. And uh, just looking back and, and all the segments that we've had previous, um, it's just so much fun to sit down and, and chop it up and um, really get to some nitty-gritty here. So let's get right to it. Yeah, can you uh, introduce uh, our guest to the man with the chain in the middle? Of course. Um, it is my honor. It is my great pleasure to introduce the one and only Kendall Graveman, ladies and gentlemen. Kenny, what's up, buddy? Thank you, guys. Hey, thanks for having me. I didn't know this was even a thing. I thought we were just doing it. I didn't know this was a past relationship you guys had of doing this. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm honored to be here, man. I, this is all new to me. You're it wasn't me- like a like a full relationship. It was more like a summer fling um, that kind of, you know, had its it had hot moments. But uh, yeah, we, we go back a little bit. Every once in a while. Yeah. You know. Aaron, I saw the mustache you used to rock. That was, I uh, mean, we might need to bring that back this year. Yeah, I did. I did notice as we saw the <laughs> clips from old episodes. I remain very pale. I do have <laughs> less facial hair, though. So there is there is a slight change. Marco loved it. Now, many actually America loved it. They love the mustache. Uh, hey, Kendall, we, we're pumped, uh, first of all, that you're going to be back with the Mariners in 2021. We, we loved uh, watching you pitch when you were on the mound last year. And I, I've talked to Marco a lot over the past year about the Mariners and about you in particular. And he's raved about you, what you bring on the field and off the field. We're going to dive into that over the next hour. Uh, we're going to play a little quick pitch at the end where we hit you with some rapid fire questions. And uh, Kendall, also, you get to flip the script a little bit. We're going to play take it to the grave against Marco. So, um, Marco, you have your condiment packets in front of you? Yeah, I'm ready to roll. Uh, like I said earlier, you know, this this friendship might make or break in this hour. So, uh, you know, like I said, I'm nervous, I'm anxious, and I'm I'm hopeful that we are still close after this, Kenny. So take it easy, <laughs> take it easy on me, man. That'll uh, come up at the end of the program. But Kendall, uh, first of all, off season for you, we know you've been working out like everybody else, but I would have to imagine the, the biggest news for you this off season would be your Crimson Tide hoisting the trophy yet again, man. You're a huge Alabama fan, and it, like wasn't, it wasn't even competitive, man. It wasn't even a game. It's about two games a year that Alabama plays. That's really fun to watch, and one of them always is national championship game, and even this year, it was a little boring. So I loved it because I got to give Evan White a lot of grief. He is – he's in the same boat as me. <laughs> and we get a lot of flack from from Seeger because he tells us we go to school. We went to school at a different school that we really root for. But a Whitey grew up an Ohio State fan. And so before the game, he had the audacity to text me and ask, hey, let's put a little wager on it said, if Ohio State wins, you dress in Ohio State gear the first day of, of camp. And if Alabama wins, you get to dress me in whatever you want in Alabama gear. So oh, man. I'm looking forward to that one coming wow. up. I can't wait for opening day spring training of 2021 when I get to see Evan White in a lot of crimson and white. So it was fun to watch the guys win this year. I'm a Mississippi State grad. Well, I got eight hours left, but I went to Mississippi State for four years. and Maybe I'll get that degree one day. 
in Alabama through and through, though. I mean, grew up going to games, and it was uh, it was fun to see them win. Have you given thought as to what you're going to make Evan White wear? Like, are you just gear that you have that you're going to let him borrow? Will this be special, Evan no, White? No, no, this will be. Doing? Yeah, I'll buy everything. So I tried to do another wager on the basketball game that happened. Uh, I think it was actually the night after and say, hey, you could do double or nothing. He said, how do we do that? And I said, well, if Alabama wins and you pay for everything that I want to buy and he didn't he didn't buy for it. So actually, Alabama beat him in basketball twice this year. And I'm sorry, Evan, but rough on the sports teams this year. Yeah, that's a that's that's a rough one. I'm I'm uh. I'm glad you told me that, man, so I can have my camera ready and I'm going to be posted up and, and document this entire thing because there's nothing I love more than, than losing or winning and losing bets in, in college sports between your teammates of guys who have gone there previously and everything. So I love it. That's awesome. I mean, Marco, you and you and Seeger must have gone back and forth on hoops, right? Tournament time? You know, Goldie, um, <laughs> we did. We did do that, and uh, but it seems like nowadays Seeger is more inclined to claim North Carolina as a football school now. Um, so he's drifting away from the challenge that Gonzaga brings, which I understand because it's tough to go up against number one. You know, I understand. I understand. There's a strange. There's this like national championship game a couple of years ago, North Carolina Gonzaga. I don't. I don't recall what happened to that. Yeah. Hey, by the way, I'm curious. Um, why does it look like Kendall is calling in from like the Vanderbilt mansion and Marco looks like he's calling in from his dorm room in Spokane. <laughs> what, what? I mean, you both have adequate big league service time under your belt. I just don't understand why the backgrounds look so drastically different. Well, I mean, Kenny's got like, yeah, he's got the Marriott suites over there. The, the King suite with the drapes and everything, dude, that looks nice. Hey, is, that, is that a, is that, is that your master bedroom married. or? It's being married for five years. Like, <laughs> I mean, that's nothing you did. No, this is none of my doings. And <laughs> if I had it my way, it'd be looking like that right there. So, yeah, uh, no, this is uh thanks Goldie for the, uh, for the, for the slight diss there. But uh, no, this is our office, our office space. You know, we got some books. We're very educated in this household. So, <laughs> uh, you know, we need a place to store our things and, and, you know, we got a full desk in here and everything. So, you know, it is what uh, it is, yeah. man. The, 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 the dozen books you have back there look like they've really, <laughs> you've, you've been pounding those this off season. Yeah. That's, lots of pictures, lots of pictures, honestly. Yeah. Of yourself. That looks nice. Um, <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Hey, um, the, all joking aside, Kendall, I think everybody was anticipating you returning to the Mariners it maybe didn't happen in exactly the way that we all saw coming, but the bottom line is you are back with the ball club for 2021. Uh, take us through what, what it was like for you making that decision to sign back with Seattle, a team that, as we all know, last year you, you were here with, but you were injured for a part of the season. You weren't on the mound very much, and it was the truncated season, so you really didn't even get the full feel of a complete 162 with the guys. Oh you get the phone call that the option is not being picked up and like in that moment it's tough. It's like you're battling because I'm a relationship guy. I love relationships. I love trying to build relationships and I built a lot of relationships, but the good news is at the end of that phone call, uh, Jerry uh, really emphasized that he wanted to try to make something work to be able to come back. So you're sitting in those moments of like, do I become a free agent and go elsewhere? And honestly, I, I haven't pitched like, it's a blessing. I got a job, man. I, I haven't pitched a full season since 2017. And I got hurt in the middle of 2018, which we could go over that later, but I've thrown like 40 innings in four years. So I'm blessed, man, to have a job. And I, I think I have a lot to offer on the back end of my career. And honestly, one of the best seasons of my life uh, last year, even though I didn't throw a lot, going down to Tacoma and the taxi squad and trying to figure out how to be a reliever and hanging out with those guys and investing in catchers and investing in young guys down there that are going to help us win and getting to know those guys. I built relationships that honestly I wouldn't have built um, if I didn't get those four or five weeks down in Tacoma. 
and, and seeing what those guys were doing in the taxi squad. So with that being said, and I knew it was a place that I wanted to come back to. And, um, you know, people like Marco and, and then the time that I've spent with Chef and Dunn and Mark and just the whole pitching staff, um, uh, especially the starters, the work that had been put in, I wanted to do the same thing with the relievers. And I think I have that opportunity now to do it. So just gracious that Jerry in the front office thought enough of me to bring me back. Uh, I told Jerry, and the first time I went up to Seattle, before I signed the first time, I had a physical, passed the physical. I sat in Jerry's office that night and I looked at across the desk uh, in his office and said, we're going to help. I'm going to help this team get to the playoffs. And I still stand by that. Um, I'll tell everyone that's listening. And I told him, I told Skip when I met him uh, and that's my goal. Uh, I, I mean, I said, look, it's been far too long. It's been way too long. And I stand by that. And that's one thing I wanted to kind of bring to fruition. And I knew if I went somewhere else, it'd be hard to do that. So uh, I, I'm here to, that's my goal. That's Marco's goal. We've talked about it numerous times. We even talked about it today on the phone and to get to the playoffs is something I want to do. Yeah, that's, I mean, I, I echo that because, um, you know, you, you touched on the, the injuries and, and kind of the, the trials, tribulations that you've been through that, not only shape you as, you know, physical as, as a pitcher, right. But mentally, you know, um, you know, going, going back to when you had TJ and, and your kind of things are in the balance and um, you know, that there's a question mark on, on the years ahead, right? Like what, what do you appreciate from that time, the work you put in and what it did for you mentally, what do you appreciate about that now? Because for me, it certainly gives me a different perspective. Yeah, man, life was going so fast. It's like you get to the big leagues. In my case, I started in low A in 2014, and I debuted in September. And then I got traded. And boy, was it like a whirlwind. I was on top of the world. Baseball was like the forefront of my life. And I really wasn't a good teammate at the time. I really wasn't a good husband at the time. I just, it wasn't who I wanted to be and was just falling down that path. And man, to have baseball taken away and I just get grounded in who I am. That was something that was special. You went from being somebody that everybody was looking at all the time to being, and you felt like the most anonymous yeah. seasons of your life. And I'm down there grinding in a minor league spring training facility um, with 17, 18 year old kids. And I'm 28 at the time. And the mental battle, um, Marco, you know about it, that there's days, and I try to help everyone now on, the, on, on Tommy John surgery, but there's days you're like, I've tore it again. Like, I'm done. Oh, man. The, you, you know how that goes. You feel so unstable for so long, you know, and, and everybody tells you that. They're like, you'll get over the hump, right? Like, there'll be, there'll be setbacks. Like, that was, that was the scariest thing for me when people told me, plan on having a setback. And that, that was one of the things where, you never plan on things like that, right? Like you plan for everything to go smoothly. We, we work so hard to come back and you just want to take steps forward. So there's a lot of, you know, instability physically and mentally, you know, going through that. And you're sitting there and a week goes by and you put your head down, a month goes by, you put your head down, like five months goes by and you're starting to pick up a baseball. And I promise you there was a week in there. I'm like, I, my career is over. And especially because yeah. I was dealing with the bone tumor stuff in the midst of it. There yeah. was days I was dealing with that. And I'm like, well, if the Tommy John goes, well, I don't know what this is. And doctors are telling me they can't do anything about it. And boy, to have faith and just trust that there's something going on and the reasoning. Um, I truly believe the reason is to get me to a bullpen situation and, and kind of flourish in that, that role uh, to be able to impact a team in that situation. I would have never been in that if I didn't have this um, going on. And thankfully I feel so much better right now than I did a year ago, than I did two years ago. And I'm battling through not only Tommy John surgery, but the bone tumor aspect of it too. And, and there was days I'm like, I, I just need to go home. I need to quit. I, I don't think I can do it. But then in the back of your mind, the passion of the game, Marco, you possess it too. It's like, I got a lot more to give. And 
And then you come out and I remember throwing to the hitters for the first time and I threw one inning to hitters and I'm in uh, the Cubs complex in Mesa and I go back to the dugout and I remember just bawling my eyes out because it'd been like 14 months of just work. Nobody seeing what the work you're putting in, nobody even knowing that you're down there anymore. And boy, it was like a, a freeing feeling at the time, like, all right, I can do this. And then you still had another four months before I've pitched in a game. But I remember just sitting there balling, man, and people looking at me like they don't understand. But if you've gone through it, you, you know, and it gives me a different perspective now on the back end of it. Yeah. Yeah. And then like 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 you mentioned, you know, the this this bullpen role, you mentioned the the bone tumor that you have in, in your neck um that's that's kind of limited the the in a, in a way your your pitch count right so this right. is kind of giving you a new role new direction which is maybe this this silver lining this blessing um certainly i've seen what you can do um and and the way that you can dominate um is something like i i've i haven't seen in a long time and um so you know we're we're gonna need we're gonna need that uh that perspective that experience down in the bullpen you know with with guys that we have coming in young and, and new guys and things like that. You know, Kendall, I'm, I'm curious when, when you had to be shut down because of this benign bone tumor in your neck this past season, and then you reached out to the training staff and said, how about trying me in the bullpen? I think I can manage that level of pain. And then Jerry gives his blessing. You try it out and it ends up being a great fit. The amazing thing to me is what would have happened, what could have happened to your not only short-term career, but maybe big picture, your career, if you hadn't made that phone call. And the Mariners decline an option at that point. And you haven't pitched all but a handful of innings coming off a two-year hiatus because of Tommy John. And now you've got a benign bone tumor. And we're coming off of a, a COVID shortened season where every team has lost money and people don't want to spend because they're in the hole. I mean, what happens to Kendall Graveman? What happens to Kendall Graveman's career? I know these are all things I'm sure you and your wife have obviously gone over time and time again and the gratitude you must have that you made that phone call and you pressed for this role. It's now going to bless both sides, but my goodness, it's scary to think what would have happened if, if you hadn't picked up the phone. Yeah, and how about playing that scenario in your mind? I mean, like I talked about last time, earlier this week when we were on, it's just like – it all hits you at once. Like this could be, this could be it. That ain't the way I want to go out. Cause I knew I had some good stuff in the tank. Um, but I, at that point, if that would have happened, I would have had two starts since the middle of 2018 going into an off season. How do you explain the teams you're healthy? How do you explain the teams that, Hey, you're good. And the way I'm feeling right now, I would have definitely signed a minor league contract and tried to pursue that career, continue to get back to the big leagues. But I mean, there were moments in those days where I was like, I, I don't even know if I want to do it anymore. And I, I tried not to wear it at the field. Like, I hope that I didn't, that wasn't what the guys saw in the clubhouse because I don't want to ever bring that energy to the clubhouse. And that was a tough situation too, because I need guys to talk to. And I was honest with Marco and some other guys, but there were some guys when I went on the DL, like didn't even know. And that's not me. I don't want to, cause I look fine physically from the outside. And they tell me that it can't get worse. So, but it was just the the pain tolerance over time that that kind of that hit me pretty hard. And when you've ever dealt with something like that, uh, it definitely makes you blessed right now. That hey, let's go out and both sides can be blessed from this situation. I, I do totally agree with that statement. And that's my goal is to to prove to the Mariners that hey, this was a good sign and a good fit for us also. So when you come off the IL and you start pitching in relief, it was a wonderful story. And it was great to see that the dominant stuff right away, maybe even more dominant than we could have anticipated. And one of the best parts of it is the piece of hardware that you've got on your neck. As a result of this, we're going to roll back the tape to uh, your first appearances after coming off the injured list and uh, your initial comments about the chain. I had a couple of friends, um, a couple of my starter friends got together and purchased me a, a gift and a welcome back gift. So they told me I needed to wear it after I, after I pitched in games. So these guys make me feel welcomed here. So that was kind of a, a welcome back gift from them. 
it's, it's almost a pound. So I'll let y'all decide if it's real or not. I mean, we got a lot of rookies, so <laughs> it may or may not be real. <laughs> the chain, Kendall, is is one of a kind. You you wear it very well. What does your wife think about the chain? Uh, I try not to wear it around the house much. So <laughs> she doesn't say a whole lot. She just kind of, oh, here y'all go again with your shenanigans. <laughs> Uh, she knows how baseball works so I'll get the eye roll every now and then from her but uh, man, it was such a fun time I was just happy to be back and these guys presented me with this and I don't know whose idea it was or who thought of it but it was awesome yeah I remember uh I remember the whole well, first of all when you came back and made your made your return in the pen I mean the whole dugout was on the top rail I mean that was that was one of the coolest parts just from the side, looking at the rest of our guys and how excited they were for you to come back. Because we all know what you've been through. We see you on a daily basis and people don't see some of the behind the scenes things that, you know, first of all, character wise, and then journey wise that you've been through. Um, and then to see everybody just light up when you get, you know, throw a scoreless up and, you know, it's just one of those things where everybody's so relieved and happy for you. And then um, I think it was a combination of Dunn and Chef that it was their idea. And I love how in the interview, you're like, I don't know if it's real. We got a bunch of rookies. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Let's let's check the uh, the budget here for what we got. Um, but, you know, when they uh, when they when they they brought it to my attention, and I said, it's perfect. I go, this guy is deserving of some bling and he needs to he needs to show up with some swag. So I loved it. Yeah, how many Man, necklaces? How many necklaces are, are walking around the streets in Birmingham like like that where you live? I, I'm the only one. <laughs> I promise you that. <laughs> the only person. Uh, but I remember that that game. You know, I I, I hear the guys and I I hear them pulling for me and. <clears throat> after the game, you're thinking, man, was that just adrenaline or can I repeat that? You know, and um, thankfully I was able to repeat it, but I can't wait for fans to be, be there because there was some adrenaline and some emotion, but there was cardboard cutouts in the stands, you know, it's like how much emotion and adrenaline can you have in front of a bunch of cardboard cutouts? So I can't wait to pack T-Mobile and, and just, man, that, that'll be a day uh, coming out of the bullpen. Yeah and running up to a mound in a close game in a leverage situation and, and feeling that energy and that electricity. And I felt it from the guys that night, but boy, can you imagine? I can't wait, especially in a playoff push. And I think about that often, especially being out of the bullpen and letting a few heaters rip and, and seeing how hard we can throw a couple of them. So one of the things, one of the things that I, I want to, I want to ask you, because we've talked about this a little bit, um, I have a little bit of experience coming out of the bullpen uh, early in my career. And then when I started with Seattle, I made a couple starts and then they put me in the bullpen too at the end of 17. Um, and it's a different animal, right? It's a different mentality. So, you know, I know we talked about this a little bit, but what, what can you bring from your starting experience and what are you planning to change about your mentality to be able to maximize your potential down there. Because when you come out, it, you're like a, like I, I picture when relievers come in, like they're busting out of the gates, like a bull, like a buck and bronc, like they're, they're coming in and they're, they're fire and their energy and they're just pure adrenaline. So like you have to change your prep, you have to change your mental prep and, and, but some things, you know, ritual wise and routine wise keep the same from, from starting. So what, what are some similarities and what are some things that you want to, you know, from your experience last year, change for this year I think the biggest thing I can bring um, coming out of the bullpen is is location um, you know how important that is Marco you're a guy that locates with the best of anybody in the big leagues and for me uh, I, I was talking to, to Murph last year and he was like man the best back end of the ball game guys I've ever been around locate very well and that gave me a lot of confidence so just to be able to locate uh, the best of my ability and then I, I think it also brings a, a pitch efficiency because we all know how important it is to not run up 30 pitches to get three outs and there were several times last year I got three outs in less than 10 pitches and I made myself available for the next day and made myself available for the following day after that and that's such that goes such a long way over 162 um, 
it goes a long way over 60, but it really goes a long way over a full season. And I think that's another thing I can bring. And then mentality wise, the experience, uh, just being able to slow the game down when there are um, thousands of fans that are rowdy and it's a close ball game and you're right in the middle of the lineup. I like to tell the guys, I was telling the younger guys in the bullpen last year, as a starter, you want to get the game rolling and you want to have a good tempo. And out of the bullpen, I'm okay if you take all the time in the world, you need to get three outs. If you're focused and locked in on the 10, 15 pitches that you need to make. And nobody's going to get upset as a rel for, as, for a reliever to be out there and taking more time than, than may be necessary um, to slow the game down. Your heart rate's up, you're going, like you're talking about the adrenaline coming out of the bullpen. Uh, you have that intensity. So to be able to control the heart rate, slow the game down, that's something that I want to emphasize to our younger guys because when it gets snowballing, we've all seen it, man. It just gets – you can tell when guys are out there and it's the game's a little sped up on them. So I think our guys did a good job of that last year, but we can do even better. No, yeah, I'm, no. I'm curious for both of you guys. Uh, go back to a comment that Marco made a few minutes ago about everybody being up on the top rail, Kendall, when you – came off the IL and pitched out of the pen for the first time and how everybody was was right there pulling for you. Uh, culture is the great buzzword probably in any industry and baseball is no exception. But when I look at where the Mariners are right now and where the Mariners want to be and how quickly they can close that gap, the culture is one of the things that, that jumps out first and foremost. And it has a lot to do with the players, the talent level, the skill that is currently there and the skills that are coming as well in the short term. But it's also the people. I mean, Marco, you and I have talked about this. When I look at the guys and from my, inter my interactions with them, like they're all, you guys are all the same guy, more or less. I mean, it's Hanniger, it's Seeger, it's Marco, it's Murphy, even the young guys, Evan White, Kyle Lewis. Your guys are all wired the same way. And you all happen to be really good elite level ball players. Marco, first for you, I mean, from the time that you have been with Seattle till now, I mean, is this exactly the vision that you guys had in mind in terms of cementing the culture like it currently is? Yeah, it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely the goal to put character first. You know, that's how, that's how winning teams are created. That's how cultures are created. And, um, you know, our job, me, Kendall, Seeger, Hanniger, uh, Murph, you know, our job as leaders of this team um, are to define what that culture means, right? To, to be the, the, the spearhead to follow and, and show guys not only how we do things, but how we talk and how we communicate with each other and um, how we act on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, <clears throat> you're right. I think we, we've we found a certain a certain mold of players that, yeah, there's, there's a range of guys that's, we all have similar things in common, but um, you know, we each bring our own things to the table. And um, I think that that's what makes this group special is we have uh, a couple of defining traits that are very similar and that's um, you know, work ethic uh, character is, it is, is comes first, you know, we're all, we're all uh, team driven and we want to get better. But at the end of the day, um, the thing it comes down to is uh, we want to win. And, and that's, that, that's why we train. That's why we play this game for so long is we show up ready to, the ball, ready to go at the ballpark to win that game that day. Um, and, and to be standing at the end of the year, last team standing, win the last game of the year, you know? And um, so I, I think we've definitely made strides in that direction uh, to be able to, you know, bring a cohesive group together that, uh, that works well together too. You know, we, we love to learn and, uh, be around each other. I think that's important as well. Kendall, what was it like in that vein for you as an outsider coming in last year? You had seen the Mariners from afar, from within the division with the A's. You were part of some really good ball clubs there. Now you get a, a primary role with this team. What was your view immediately? And as the season went on, it's just the, the culture with the, within the clubhouse and the type of guys that were making up the Mariners. Yeah, I, I'd seen years previous with the Mariners too and honestly should have been a couple of playoff teams in there and there's there's something missing I believe on some of those teams and and just talking to some of those guys that were there 
Um, you just need that little bit of, and, and culture in my mind never takes a day off. Like as leaders of this team, we have to push, what is our culture going to be? Is it going to be hustle and, and, and down the line and get good nineties? Is it going to be throwing strike one? Those are physical parts of it. But then also who's going to be the guy that's, that's pushing the culture as far as how are we going to um, treat clubhouse staff? How are we going to treat visiting clubhouse guys? How are we going to um, speak to um, chefs that are cooking dinners for us? Those things go such a long way. And a lot of times the guys can push the physical part, but are we really pushing the character driven part too? That I think brings a bond and a closeness of, of a unit when people see the outside, Hey, they're taking care of the little things. So they're most definitely going to take care of the bigger things that are happening on the field. And for me, um, we started to build that last year. Uh, we got, I hopped right in and, and jumped on board with some of those guys that were been there for a while. I hate Haney one with us last year and what he's going to bring to us this year. I'm super excited about, I hate Murph. What happened to him, man. That's just what a crazy story that is, but thankfully that he's feeling better and, He's going to be back with us. So to have a couple of those older kind of <clears throat> presence in the, in the in the clubhouse is going to be big, too, to to fall in line with us. I think that's that's one thing you just touched on that we're not talking about a lot is we, we get two new guys this year who are cornerstones, co- cornerstones for us in that clubhouse, not only on the field, like as our catcher and one of our main outfielders, but two dudes that are going to hit in the main in the middle of the lineup and are going to hold – some serious weight in that clubhouse. And uh, I'm, I'm excited. I know that you've only worked with Murph a little bit, but um, Murph brings an intensity and a fire that's, that's going to drive us, keep, keep the motor going to this team. And, and he's one of those dudes that's going to be an anchor for us. So, um, and Hanniger is the same way. I mean, uh, the time that I've been able to spend with him, he, we, we had a nickname for him a couple of years ago, just our, our champion. Like you can't, you can't explain it any other way. The dude is a champion. He does, he does everything the right way. You can barely talk to him at the field because he's he's from here to here, the weight room, the training room, the field, the BP. Like he is like a clock, and and uh, and then at the end of the day, he he strives to win, and he's he's got that chip on his shoulder um, that that just can't be taken away. So two guys that we've missed greatly. Um, it's like we've gotten two new players there. You know, one thing I'd touch on too is <clears throat> a Seager a ton, but man how special would it be? I looked at him last year at the end of the year and I asked him a simple question. I said, do you want to be in the playoffs? And obviously his answer was yes. I said, man, you got a, it, you got a definite one year left. I, I, it'd be my privilege for us to, to help you get to the playoffs. And he's somebody that has selfless as anybody he's helped. I mean, he had more of a, a young group around him to help than Marco and I did. At least I had somebody there w- with me to help some of the younger guys and talk to him. But yeah. Seager almost felt like he was on the island last year with with some of those guys. But he every day was working with them, talking about baseball, talking about approaches, talking about how to take good approaches at the plate. And I respect him so much. Um, love that guy to death. He just he's a gamer. He's a competitor. You know what you're gonna get out of him. He plays through injuries. Um, he never tried. He, I mean, he doesn't miss games unless it absolutely has to. And just a special, special human. And he's going to be, it's going to be special for him um, this year. I think it's going to be a great year for him. He's going to have a good year. I believe in his ability um, and who he is as a person. Marco, you brought up to Tom Murphy. If, if you are pitching to Murph and like you don't execute a pitch and bad things happen. Like, do you fear that Murph's going to physically hurt you? <laughs> I'm like, like that, like it wouldn't be in anyone's best interest, but like there's rage in those eyes. He's a nice man. But there's, <clears throat> there's serious rage there. Yeah, there is. There's a, uh, <laughs> there's a primal, uh, primal <laughs> rage in that man. And uh, I, I've, I've, I've enjoyed having him on my team because I never want to go against that guy. Um, you're going to war. You want you want that guy next to him. I, I call him Captain America. He, he he's one of the he's easily one of the strongest dudes I've ever played with. One of the nicest dudes of all time. Um, 
But I mean, yeah, why, why do you think I've worked on my command so much? I mean, I'm scared of that dude coming after me. So, I mean, if I don't hit my spot, like he's the dude that will like bang on the plate with his fist, like, come on, let's go. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I didn't know we were going there. So um, I'm, I'm just excited. I'm excited to have him back. It makes him look not as fierce though when he does that little thing at the plate before he hits. <laughs> That's funny. I start laughing. I'm kind of scared to ask him why he started doing that, but I have too. I, I have laugh too. every time he does it, bro. He does a little, he does a little like lunge, like or like yeah, a little, like a little. Kind of he's in there. And uh, man, watch for it next time. He's just activating glutes. That's all that is. And he's just he's just activating. It's some some Russian trainer from the '80s or something taught him that. There's no doubt. Yeah, yeah. There's not a doubt. Hey, Kendall, uh, your your guys is pitching coach Pete Woodworth recently spoke to the media at one of the media sessions during the Mariners baseball bash. And uh, Kendall, I want you to listen to uh, an answer to a question that was directed his way. Uh, Someone asked Pete, which pitcher he was most excited to watch this spring training. I'd have to say Kendall Graveman. Um, Not just a, a, a pleasure to be around, but um, dudes on a mission had had high hopes for him, high expectations for him last year. Um, he came into spring training. He was a, a veteran presence, um, you know, immediately took it, took over the clubhouse. Uh, guys gravitate towards him. Great teammate, great human, great competitor. Um, but during quarantine, like like I said, just kind of went on a mission and, and came back to summer camp um, with with a lot of new toys and with with uh, added velo and just had had high hopes for him and and you put the uh, you put the competitor with the leader and, and the person you just you you wanted to see this guy go out there. Yeah, pretty strong words from your pitching coach. He he had a lot of guys to choose from. Who he's most excited to watch throw in Peoria this year? What what do you make of Pete's comments? I paid him well. <laughs> paid it better than Marco. <laughs> no, man, Woody, I love you, dude. And what a special man. Um, he was with those guys in Arkansas and Double A, and I was asking Whitey. He's only a couple. I was like, Woody's only a couple years older than me. Like, what do you think about him? He's like, he's a real dude. He's good. He's good. I was asking Kalu, like, what do you think? He's like, he's good. He's good. And then to work with him for a year, man, uh, those comments are, are humbling. Um, it's special for, to hear it coming from him. I know at the beginning of the year, I was warming up for my first start in Houston. And uh, we just having a conversation out in the outfield. Uh, as I was warming up for my start, I'm a little bit more relaxed. Marco's kind of like zoned in on his start day, but I'll talk. I'll communicate with other people and Marco won't. So, I'm sitting there and I'm talking to him, having a conversation. He's like, man, you're going to have a great year, great year. And I bet he didn't know it was going to go that way. But um, I can't wait to get out there and and compete with him because he competes as well as anybody. And uh, he fights for us. He wants the best um, version of you. He wants to help you. He works tirelessly. Him and Trent are – and Trent's going to be good for us in the bullpen. But, man, I – Marco, you can speak on Woody, but I, almost out of words, just he's just he's that good. He really is. He's a great hire. He's can do this for a long time and help a, a lot of guys. He helped a lot of guys last year, and he's gonna continue to do that. Yes. Yeah, now you hit you hit the nail on the head, man. Um, we we're fortunate that you know to have him with us. Like you said, he competes and he wants. He wants us to be successful and he wants us to to grow and not only as pitchers, but as people. And he's invested. You, you can tell the way that he goes about his day. He's invested in what he does. He takes pride in, in, uh, in being a coach. And <clears throat> I think that it, it just it just goes to show, you know, he, he's he leads by example. He does the right things um, at the right time. And um, another thing that, that makes Woody great is is. He, he individualizes to our guys, right? Like, like Kenny said, like 
he he's different with Kendall than he is with me. And he knows what I need versus what Kendall needs on game day. Sometimes on bullpens, he won't say a thing. He, he'll just, he'll just stand back and watch either because he knows you're going to make an adjustment on your own or he knows you're locked in and he doesn't want to mess with you. So he's got, he's got a feel um, that I've just, I, I've, I've admired. And, you know, I tell him all the time, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to take this team to special places. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're with us because we're going to need someone who's competing um, right alongside us. So, yeah, you hit it, you hit it on the head with that. He's a good blend um, of teaching just baseball and a good blend of the newer age, which I like. There's got to be a, a good blend of, of both um, just the analytics side of it, but also how do you go out and compete and be a pitcher? So uh, he understands both sides equally, teaches both sides equally. Um, and when that pendulum in baseball has swung so far one way, it's hard to come across somebody that's equal. Um, and he is. <clears throat> and uh, I think last year he was a bit shocked of, you know, as any new coach would be coming into the big leagues and everything that goes along with it. And I think this year he's going to be a lot more, all right, a little bit more, I don't say focus, but knows what it takes and knows the ropes. And um, that takes a little time. I think last year was a good learning lesson for him. And I think he would say the same thing. Yeah. Like he needed, he needs time to like come into his own and like still figuring it out, still, still adjusting to the things he needs to do on a daily basis and things he needs to say this year, we ain't waiting around for him to adjust. We're good going i i mean learning time is over um it, it's time to go it's time to go compete and uh now that he knows who we are i'm excited because i wanted him to get to know us you know as as other players do and um you know just know us as who we are off the field too and i think he does and um you know hopefully he can he can uh he can help us to to win a lot of games for sure Yet to find somebody to say anything but glowing remarks and reviews about Pete Woodworth as uh, your now second year pitching coach. Hey, Kendall, you uh, you referenced Marco and kind of the, sounds like some differences that you two have on days that you start. Will you describe for us what Marco is like on a day that he's the starting pitcher? Oh, man, guys, he comes in. I mean, laser focus. Like, he looks straight through you. You don't even know anybody else in the locker room. Walks in, locker, gets whatever he needs on for the day. And headphones, like, don't talk to me. And one of the most impressive things I've ever seen is how somebody can stay locked in for, like, six straight hours. <laughs> most guys will get locked in an hour before the game. He's three hours before the game, and it works. He doesn't get tired of being locked in. It's fifth, sixth inning, and it's the same, like, laser focus as it was five and a half hours earlier. My brain, I can't do it. And I'm like, I got to laugh a little bit. I got to talk to somebody. But it just speaks to the volume. Like, it speaks to who he is and how he's able to mentally get in that position. And, and we've talked about it before. I can turn the light switch on and off a little bit once his light switch is on for the day, and especially the day that he's starting, it's got to stay on. And some guys are like that. Some guys are like myself. But um, to be that intentional and knowing that his homework's done, Hayes in the barn, like it's time to go play. And now I just got to make sure that my mental side of it is right. And when that mental side's right for Marco, he knows it and everyone else knows it. And then you – is the exact is true when it's not um you grind through some starts and we'll talk about it afterwards he's like man I just mentally I was a little off today I just wasn't as locked in as I usually am and to be able to find that spot over and over and over and consistently do that is one of the toughest things to do in sports I, I tried to do it my whole my whole starting career and out of the bullpen it's a little different I gotta lock it in for 15 minutes and as a starter it gets really difficult and the guys that can do it are the best and the guys that can't, that's where you see the inconsistency. Um, so man, Marco, congrats for being able to do it, but it's a tough gig. I feel like there was like some compliments in there, but also like, 
<laughs> you're like, man, this dude is kind of crazy. Like, I don't know about it, but you, gotta be, uh, you would agree. You gotta be a little crazy. No, man. I, uh, I agree with you, man. You have to be a little, a little, little off the chain sometimes, but, uh, no, I, I, he's right. He's absolutely hundred percent right. And, and I don't know where that started for me. I think just, I've, I've had this, uh, I've had this fire, this like intensity inside of me for a long time. And I, when I get, when I, it's my turn to pitch, like it, it's uncontrollable. It, it's out there. And the only way I can not hurt my, my teammates, those around me is I just got to be internal with it and just go light the fire. And and I remember this year, JP was giving me a hard time because I'm sitting there after the game. I think I went like six or seven innings and, and pitched, pitched. Okay. We won the game and um, I'm sitting there at my locker. It was a getaway day. I'm sitting there in my locker, just like still like backpack, you know, suitcase and we're getting ready to catch the bus to the plane. And I'm sitting there just like quiet. And JP, I noticed him three lockers down. He's sitting there just laughing at me. He's like, you can't get out of it. He's like, you're still those. <laughs> He's like, the game's over, man. Like they, the other team <laughs> left already. Like they're gone. <laughs> Stop. Like move on, man. And I'm like, I, I don't know. And this was in like late September when I was just, you know how I was. I was hot. I was just wanting to push and, and wanting to, to keep going. And I feel like 60 innings wasn't enough. Like I'm, I'm ready to go. And um, yeah, it's, it's just what you're going to get, man. But I love that my teammates know, they know me by now. And I guess just hope that I'm reliable and consistent. <laughs> I guess. Hey, you should hear some of the positional players. They give the starting pitchers such a hard time. Oh, they're coming in with their headphones. They got to pitch once every five days. We have to do it every day. Oh, don't talk to me. And yeah. Seager's like the leader of it. So, oh, look, here comes the starting pitcher with his headphones in. Don't talk to him. Yeah. They have a fun time with it, man. It's, <laughs> those positional players, if you don't watch out, they'll be talking behind your back. That's true. That's true. It, it, I, I, what I've learned here is that all my interactions with Marco ever are like on the days when he pitches, you know, looking right through me, laser <laughs> focused, paying no attention to what I'm saying, his own agenda, not mine. Yeah. Like I, I've learned, I only know Marco's starting day. Like that's. Yeah. Well, that's exclusive to you. You, you get that treatment just because of it's something about your face. I don't know. <laughs> I understand. I get that. Well, you're right. trying to have better hair than me. So it's, it is a compliment. Well, uh, guys, it is, um, it is time now for a little game that we've just recently started playing that we like to call Take It to the Grave. Now, Kendall and I have had our run at Take It to the Grave. Today, it is Marco's exclusive opportunity to play so first uh for those who missed it let's go back to earlier in the week when uh kendall and i had our first go around of take it to the grave kendall what is your honest opinion of the oakland coliseum your former team and if you don't want to answer this then you got to hammer down a you got to go mayo on me i mean you got people who love you there man people love you at the coliseum you know the ushers, you know the vendors, the clubbies. I'm going to have to hammer down some minutes. <laughs> <laughs> there uh, it is. I, see, it's all worth it to get on. This is, like, this is like my worst nightmare. <laughs> this is terrible. My palms are sweating. I'm going to go ahead and open up my water bottle before we get this going. God. I, 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 saved, I saved the mayo for this particular reason. Yeah, I got the mayo for your next question, too. Mm. There it is. Just squeeze, squeeze that in all the way, all the way, the whole pack. Oh, oh, oh. That's what I'm talking about. How That's that awful. Tangy mm, and rich. Luscious. I just got over the stomach bug like two days ago. Lost to it ten pounds in two days, and I about just did it again. That was Aaron. That was awful. <laughs> I've never done that. Oh, number three. God. Which of your kids are you least proud of? <laughs> <laughs> For the mayo. <laughs> uh, well, see, the great thing is that, like, they're all they're all too young to yeah. even know what I'm doing right this now. Will save on YouTube. Yeah, I mean, my oldest is six. I got six. I got six. That's a great question. 
six four and one i mean like i could say the one-year-old because like he really won't know but that's yeah, mean. Right? that's mean man to say it you're not proud of a one-year-old <laughs> uh that but that is really mean <laughs> Like, I thought this would be easy just to throw one of my kids under the bus, but, I mean, you're a dad, man. Hey, like, that's... Just wait till they're 10 or 12, and they look up Daddy's interview with Kendall, and they have to... <laughs> like, wow, Dad's not proud of me? <laughs> they try to you know, that's that. a great point. Like, they this is going to live forever. They can when they can't understand it. This is going to live forever. Yeah, you might as well just hammer down. You're the worst, man. Go ahead. <laughs> it's awful. It's bad, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's so terrible <laughs> chase it <laughs> did you get all of it did you get oh, all of it oh god <laughs> <laughs> that's bad oh and i like i actually like bad days but in different like quantities that. our biggest takeaway is that oh. uh, Kendall hasn't changed since uh, Wednesday when we did this. Uh, you still look great, Kendall. Uh, I know. I just. I'm glad you don't have any mayo stains on that shirt. <laughs> Three days, same outfit. <laughs> uh, so, Marco, you feel good about this, right? No, I feel horrible. That made me feel so much worse about this. Well, let's play. But I'm ready. I'm ready? ready. I've never backed down from a challenge. So, let's go. What's your least favorite condom? Which one? My least favorite yeah. out of these? Yeah, you can really believe. I mean, them. okay. Here's I'll give you the options of what I got to choose from. Okay, right. I got yellow mustard, ketchup, uh, honey, sweet relish, mayonnaise, and Tabasco. Well, honey's oh. off the board. Yeah, yeah, honey. All right, I'm gonna take honey off the board. Um, we'll start with a mustard. All right. Here we go. Question one: Take it to the grave. Name the team that lost in the 2017 NCAA national championship and then i would even add what team beat them to the question <laughs> i mean you're gonna make me relive it that's fine well, marco, but no you don't have to answer it marco this is the thing you don't have to answer it Eat the i mean it's not like it's like a like opinion based like it's fact based you know oh like, it's a fact yes so i mean gonzaga lost north carolina won yeah, 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 it happened. Hey, did you happen to get a package this off season? Yeah, so quick story. Uh, Gravy, Justin Dunn, and Justice Sheffield sent me a North Carolina care package this off season for Christmas. <laughs> and, and it showed up it showed up on my doorstep and I about I about fought the mailman. I didn't know what to do. I, I lost it. And I'm texting everybody I know, like who could have done this and I texted these guys because I had a feeling, and they were dying laughing, man. I'm, I'm about to, like, yeah, he was they're hot. doing something in spring. That's messed up. He was hot. <laughs> I was hot. You brought it. You brought the fire out, bro. You brought the start day fire. I was about to fight somebody. Okay, question two. What's the condiment? We'll go with relish. Relish, okay. Relish. Yeah. Two of your former teammates, Wade LeBlanc, and Taiwan Walker is stranded on a, an island. You can only save one. Who is it? Oh, man. Oh, Ty going to be so mad if you don't <laughs> That's a great question. I know, man, and I know, and I know he's probably watching this or something, or somebody's going to tell him. Wade's definitely watching this because I know, I know he's all over it. But uh, – I'm going to eat the relish. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't do it, man. I messed up. All right. I got, I got a little, little chaser here. Oh man. Y'all are messed up, dude. I need that to get, was not this is like chunk, this, this is like chunky too. I need to get like a big opening for this. Cause this is like chunky relish. Who got this? For me? It's kind of warm too, ain't it? <laughs> it's warm. It's been sitting in the house. It's warm, sweet relish. It's sweet relish. Worse. The worst. All right. Cheers. Hate you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Jason. 
Can Chunky Relish be oh. Marco's new nickname, by the way? There's a reason that that's like only with other foods because that's not supposed to be on its own. Oh, Eric, man. What was your least favorite the other day? The relish or the mayo? Oh. I mean, mayo, the, the, there's the sheer quantity. Well, this was unknown to me. The sheer quantity it's of mayonnaise in a mayonnaise it's packet. In it is a, it's a, I mean, the, the relish, which I also had to consume, was not pleasant, but it, it was half as much. So I think mayonnaise is the, is the ultimate here. I'm not a big relish fan, so that was terrible. Uh, and it's like I'm getting there's chunks of it in my teeth. That's gross. <laughs> I think mayonnaise is the is the kicker here. Yeah, we got mayonnaise for the last one. Last question, Marco. <laughs> Name the Mariners reliever you least want called in to protect your one nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that one. <laughs> You can't answer that. Oh, no. <laughs> There's Whoa, no way. Bro, why? Why? Yeah, you either got to tell the truth or you got to eat the mayonnaise. There ain't no – don't lie to us. You are cruel. <laughs> You're cruel and evil, man. I was easy I mean, on the I first – I got to eat the mayonnaise. Like, I got to do it. You got to eat going. the mayonnaise. You can't. This is what y'all. This is what everybody who wa- who's watching this. This is what you came to see right here. This is what this is the main event. It made me gag a little I'm bit. I'm gonna eat the Oh, oh, oh! It squirted out a little bit. Oh man! <laughs> On camera. Oh man! All right. Uh, Not half of it. Cheers. Cheers. Love you. <laughs> I don't love you right now. Oh, oh so much knuckle strength. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. It's worse than I thought. <laughs> it's so bad, bro. It's so bad. Oh my god. Oh. I need some water. Oh, I can't wait to play this the next one plays out. Oh this is the man. Best game we can play Aaron. I love it. I don't can like I that there? I didn't get in I don't like I didn't get any questions in this. Like I'm just the victim. No, we already played ours. No man, yeah, we we've, we've paid our debt to society, okay? <laughs> can I see the can I see the mayonnaise packet? I just would like to confirm that it's That's that's the ticket, man. Nicely done. Very impressive. You know what? There's a real packet you've, too. You've earned your third straight opening day start, Marco. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Glad it's not your call, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, let's uh, wind down this Emmy-worthy program with a little game directed towards Kendall that we like to call Quick Pitch. Kendall, this is where we will throw you rapid-fire questions. You have no defense, and you must answer them as quickly as you possibly can. Do you understand the rules of the game? My first question to you on Quick Pitch, Kendall. Would you rather be able to speak every language in the world or be able to talk to animals? Speak every language. I think you're giving up on something there, but that's all right. All right. My question is, would you rather bungee jump or skydive? Skydive. Kendall, would you rather cuddle with a baby panda or a baby koala? Panda. Can you expand on that? <laughs> They're cuter. Fair. I don't know why. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird. Um, all right. What's your favorite TV show of all time? I, I don't have a favorite TV show. Is that bad? That's bad. That's great bad. question, Marco. Really great question. Yeah, stump me. Okay, well that was a fail. Uh, it was. Kendall, uh, who? Not much TV watching. Kendall, who was your first ever celebrity crush? Maybe the, uh, maybe the girl in uh, Sandlot. You know the. Oh, oh, uh, Wendy, Wendy Peppercorn. Wendy, yeah. <laughs> That's that's a great call, man. Very on brand. Wince. 
Squeeze hey. Kyle Doris. Crushed it. <laughs> Fake like he was drowning. He crushed it, man. What a legend. <laughs> what a legend. He'll live forever. All right. That's a pretty good one. Um, all right. What's your favorite nickname? And it's between Kung Fu Kenny or the Gravy Train. I like Kung Fu Kenny. <laughs> That's like kind of Taiwan's deal. I Thai like started. Was I that, like that, was, that was a Taiwan original? Yeah, I don't know where it came from. We were playing golf one day, and he just started calling me Kung Fu Kenny. Kendall, can you tell us what sound a seal makes? <laughs> Doesn't a seal bark? I got to make the sound? Yeah, we need... <laughs> That's gonna be on the clip the next one. Inside clip. Five, of course, it's on the clip. Come on, dude. I <laughs> want me to do it again. <laughs> this is so crazy. What a question, man. Come on. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> All right, all right. This is kind of similar to the one you asked me, but um, if you were stranded on an island with one teammate, you have to pick one. Who would you choose? And don't don't say me because I don't. I'm not about that castaway life. I don't want to be there. Sheffield. Why? We probably both gonna die, but it'll be funny. <laughs> it'll be funny for like four days while we was doing it. <laughs> Tell me it wouldn't be funny to be stranded on an island with Sheffield. <laughs> oh my god he'd be some enter just last last day's entertainment bro we just have to get a video camera somebody come pick it up later <laughs> it'd be hilarious <laughs> i like that you think you're only gonna last four days that's yeah that's about my biggest takeaway yeah four or five. <laughs> <laughs> all right serious question lock it in would you rather have dinner with nick saban or any living member of the Baseball Hall of Fame that you choose? Boy. Uh, I can go with, uh, I can go with saving. Yeah, you got it. I knew you would. I knew you would. I knew it. I knew you would. I knew it. <laughs> Man, I would love to pick his brain over dinner. I'm he curious about the process. Who were the like handful of Hall of Famers that you were running through your mind there that you'd want to have dinner with? They got to be on the Hall of Fame. They have to be in the Hall of Fame. Like you, Nolan Ryan guy. Famers. What's that? Like. Like you Nolan Ryan, say that again. You saying a Nolan Ryan? Like uh, Nolan Ryan was somebody. I'm like, I, I can see Kendall being a Nolan Ryan guy. Yeah, I probably had to go with a positional player. Really? Mm. I think if I could choose one, I don't know. All right. All right. <laughs> I just, I I waiting like you're gonna drop a bomb on us. I thought you're gonna come up with something good right there. <laughs> um, all right, all right, we'll move on from that. If you could go, I got a feeling about this one, but if you could go pro, if you could be a pro in any other sport, which would you choose? Uh, golf. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, and that's the answer that I felt like you were gonna say. And then the guy I work out with at the gym, who's a professional golfer, he would say baseball, and I'm like, you got the life, bro. Do I play golf yeah. every day? Yeah. By the way, one of the first I comments. I always played a scenario in my head. If I played golf from the time I was started playing baseball, could I be a, a PGA golfer? You know, you always play those scenarios. Like, I wonder if I could be good at it if I practiced as much as I did at baseball. So. Yeah, my kid's going to have golf clubs for sure. I Kendall, know. Where, where do you rank on the golfing hierarchy within the team? Like, are you are you the best? Oh, within, within this team? 
nobody plays hardly anymore. So I would be. He's at the top. Oh, really? I'd be up there. I'm not great by any means. Uh, I'm not going to slow anybody down, though. You're better than Chef. Oh, good. Everybody's better than Chef. Chef, Dunn. Me and Taiwan used to just. We took uh, Dunn and Kalu to school one day over in Arizona during the spring training last year. It was so easy. We're going to have to get out there and team up against uh, Chef and Dunn, take some of their money. Honestly, I, it's something that guys don't do much anymore, and I wish it was something that guys did. Um, I think it brings some competitiveness outside of the game in a certain way where you're not, you know, fearing injury like a pickup basketball game or anything. So I think it brings a closeness. It brings a, a aspect that you can get away from your phone and just be with the boys for a little bit. And I will set it set a tea time. Let's go. I need somebody. I need somebody to back it. I need some money. <laughs> I Tell your chain. Big money, man. <laughs> All right, we got two more. Kendall, would you rather make an All Star team or win a Gold Glove? Oh, selfishly, the All Star team probably pay out a little more, but I've always wanted to win a Gold Glove. I think it'd be hard to win a Gold Glove as a reliever, but I mean, I did win the Gold Glove in spring training. You did. You did. That was kind of easy. Yeah. Too easy. Yeah. Yeah. So what's but your answer? Man, the All-Star game will be so cool. I can't wait right. for me and Mark to be at the All-Star game this year together. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, I said that. <laughs> you said it. It's out there. It's out there. All right. I got the last one here. Um, All right. If you could face any hitter in MLB history, who would it be? Well... Man, I want to face uh, Babe Ruth. I want to see in that day and age yeah. how different, like with the stuff I possess now, I really want to see what it would be like. I mean, he might hit me 500 feet, but yeah, it'd be nice to see, wouldn't it? That'd be yeah, cool. I mean, I, I kind of want to pitch back in those days because I would throw flames. I mean, oh my I, I would blow door, everyone's bro. doors off, and and that that's that's just something that it would it would be no doubt. I mean, they might be top step and like, oh, this guy throws so hard. Oh, 100 percent. They'd be like, this is the hardest throw we've ever seen in in the history of the game, and and then I come in to close it, and they'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, you too would be like from outer space if you pitched back in those days. <clears throat> 1,000%. Well, I'm in. Uh, that wraps up Quick Pitch. Kendall, nice and done. And your uh, seal sound effect has made it into Quick Pitch lore already. That's amazing. It's an, it's an instant classic. So thank you for that. You're welcome. Uh, Kendall, man, we're, we're so appreciative of your time hanging out with us here on Quick on uh, the Inside Corner. And we're pumped, man. I, I know Marco raved about you before I even met you. And now that I've had a chance to interact with you a couple of times, uh, it's, it's such a treat to talk baseball, talk life with you. And we're thrilled. We're all thrilled that you're back with the ball club in 2021. So thanks for being with us today. Thank you. Yeah, man. Thanks for joining us. And uh, man, I can't, uh, I can't say enough about how excited I am for this year, what we're going to do for this team and um, you know, the goals that we have in mind, I think we're going to surprise a lot of people. So can't wait to get to work. I'll see you down in, in Arizona in a, in a few weeks here. Marco, it was fairly pleasant being with you once again on the internet. Well, I can't say the same, but uh, it was good to see you nonetheless. I had a better time with Gravy. But uh, yeah, until next time, my friend. Will you cut your hair before Peoria? No, it's here to stay. Oh, that's nice. It's here to stay. I'll see mine. It's just very impressive, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you to uh, everybody who's been with us here for the better part of an hour on uh, this Inside Corner Live edition. And thank you so much, all the Mariners fans all across the Pacific Northwest, all across the world, for being so active and so part of the Mariners Virtual Baseball Bash. It has been a blast. And we've got an extra bonus day of the bash. It all wraps up tomorrow. We've got a lot of good stuff for the kids coming your way tomorrow as well. And thank you to everyone within the Mariners organization in the front office in marketing and communications. It has been a full front office effort to make this happen. It might be hard to realize, but this is unlike something that has ever been done anywhere, not just with the Mariners, but in Major League Baseball. This is a huge venture for the Mariners to bring on 60 members within the organization for a two-week stretch to bring 
all of our fantastic fans some truly creative, unique, one-of-a-kind content, and it's been an absolute raging success. So we're so grateful for the Mariners and for you, our fans. Thanks for being with us here on the Inside Corner. We can't wait to talk to you again from Peoria. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining us. Be sure to visit Mariners.com slash Baseball Bash for this week's full schedule.